people who would use violence and kill people for their cause, in my opinion, are not worthy of the cause. Let's talk about the tragedy in Baton Rouge. Three officers um, shot dead, uh, ambush style by a black separatist. Um, and sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on finding out who and what the shooter was. But I think it's I think it's incumbent upon us to take a moment and and consider who was lost. Now, I'm doing this because I choose to do this. Um, and I shouldn't even have to say this, but I want to say this. Um, for me, it is just as tragic. I do not. I am incapable of celebrating the death of damn near anybody to be quite honest with you. You know, I, it might be, I might have a condition where I'm just not capable of being happy about someone being killed. Even my enemy and these police officers were not our enemies. They may have been, um, may we, you know, not these police officers. I don't know anything about these police officers, but you know, we may have things that we need to protest. Yes, not may, we absolutely have things that we still need to protest. We still need to be in the streets. We still need to bring political change. We still need to bring reform to every police department across the United States. However, we gotta chill the hell out. And when I say we, let me be specific, not we, People who would use violence and kill people for their cause, in my opinion, are not worthy of the cause. Let me say that again. This is my, you come here for my opinion, so I'm going to give you what I firmly believe. Baton Rouge was a tragedy. Dallas was a tragedy. And anyone who celebrates that, you know, in my opinion, you're not worthy of the movement. I'm not capable of dismissing the loss of life for anyone. I wasn't able to do it for Antonin Scalia, you know? You know, I got, eventually I got into it and was like, you know, ding dong, the witch is dead eventually. But, you know, at least for the first 24 hours, I was legitimately, you know, I took a respite on political commentary as much as I could because we're talking about Antonin Scalia. You know, I took a pause because I wanted to respect the fact that somebody died. Most people will say that's ridiculous. That's fine. That could be ridiculous for you. But I just wanted to place it in context. I... I am completely opposed to this type of violence, 100%. I am 100% for violence if it is necessary to save my life, the life of my family, the life of my friends, or the life of somebody I'm witnessing in danger. I will have no qualms whatsoever in that type of scenario to utilize violence. And I shouldn't have to give this long caveat about this, but I want to make it clear, not just for the, the, the people who want to blame all of Black Lives Matter, because, hey, I am Black Lives Matter. I, I am Black Lives Matter. Right. I, I, I not only want to make it clear for them, but I also have to make it clear for that subset of people who would probably agree with me on 90 percent of the issues. And it's that 10 percent of the issues where we part ways and we part ways hard. And I'm not telling you that you have to feel like this is a tragedy, but I'm telling you. To me, it breaks my heart to think that these three officers, Montrell Jackson, Brad Gar um, Garofola, and Matthew Gerald, um, they are all fathers, husbands. They now leave families of children, children who have to grow up without their fathers. And to me, I'm not capable of qualifying my sadness. I grieve for them just as much as I grieved for um, Alton Sterling's 15 year old son who cried out that I want my daddy. You know what? These three officers, children are crying out the same thing. 
These are real people. These are not political pawns. And, and I'm saying that to both sides of the argument because a lot of people would use these three officers as a political prop to silence Black Lives Matter. So I just want you to think about that in context. So over the weekend on yesterday, um, a man from Missouri uh, ambushed and killed three officers, um, wounding three others. One is fighting for his life. Um, the the shooter has been ad- identified um, as it actually the young man. His birthday was um, his birthday was on yesterday. This Missouri man, um, his name and as it actually escapes me at this point, um, Long. I know his last name was Long. His first name, um, what the hell, man? I don't have his first name. Eugene, there he go. No, his middle name was Eugene. <laughs> Davin Eugene Long. You see what happens in my brain? Like, I had to piece his name together in reverse. Long Eugene Davin. So what, we don't even have to really know his name, but Davin Eugene Long. Um, from Missouri, drove from Missouri to Baton Rouge. And but now we don't have all of the details as far as this 911 call that was actually involved. Um, there's still a question mark over, and I'm sure we'll know that probably before the end of this week, over whether he actually placed the 911 call, someone in conjunction with them placed the 911 call, um, or if it was a bystander um, who placed the 911 call. But there was a 911 call that was placed that ultimately led these officers to the scene. And upon them arriving on the scene, he opened up fire and uh, wounded six, killing um, killing three. Um, Davin Long is just like the shooter from Dallas, a uh, former um, um, part of the armed services. The Dallas shooting was an, uh, he was a, a, a member of the army. Um, Davin Long was actually a Marine who spent time overseas, came back and created this online persona um, called Cosmos, uh, Convos with Cosmos. Um, He was a podcaster. He was a YouTuber. He has a lot of videos out there, uh, unfortunately, which leaves almost like a uh, a manifesto um, that people who might think similarly could go to um, and consume his material. His his I actually found out about Cos Convos with Cosmo. I would say probably an hour before most everyone else, but because I move with um, intentional uh, slowness to confirm my sources, um, I don't try to be the first one out with it. But an hour before the world find you know the, the masses found out, I went to his YouTube channel and saw that his primary video had like a hundred views. Right, nobody was going to watch that. Um, but now, you know, his video probably has is in the hundreds of thousands of views, all of them, because everyone wants to know who this murderer was. Um, so, uh, Gavin, I said Davin, but his name is Gavin Eugene Long, and so he is uh, the murderer. He is the person who killed these officers. He was part. Um, they are alleging that he is a part of a black separatist movement. Um, And this black separatist movement, they actually brought up the name of the sovereign citizens movement. Now, the sovereign citizens movement is actually a um, has roots, firm roots in racism and white supremacy. But there are some parallels with black separatist movements in the um, in the aspect that they don't view the federal government as legitimate. Um, If they view any legitimacy, they view the legitimacy from the local office. Um, the local sheriff's office. But in this case, he not only killed um, police department members from the city, he also killed a police officer. So there was a lot of speculation yesterday on whether or not uh, Gavin um, was a part of a white separatist movement. Once we found out that he was black, then uh, the conclusion was that he was a part of a black separatist movement. However, uh, in researching the sovereign citizens movement, um, which you know, has been a violent movement in the past there. And even though it has some racist, um, not some, its background is fully and thoroughly racist. There are still black members of the sovereign citizens movement. So it was not entirely implausible that Gavin Eugene Young was a part of the sovereign citizens movement. Um, But however, so all of that is still being paced, um, being paced together. So long story, uh, tragic story, 
just another week. In many ways, this is a copycat. Um, I really haven't heard a lot of people say that word in conjunction with the shooting, but he is clearly um, too many parallels with the shooting in Dallas. Um, young black man in his 20s, service in the armed forces, uh, one in the army, one in the Marines, and came back and disillusioned with the system and took up their arms and their former training and went out and killed. Listen, I've already said plenty of commentary about the type of damage one person can do um, even up against a, a, an entire department of good guys with guns. Um, nobody cares. Nothing is gonna change with the ability to get access to these types of weapons because that's just not what we do in America. We don't actually change things for the better. We just trudge, you know, dredge alone with the same problems that are going to come back and bite us in the ass next week, right? We've already given commentary on the fact that these guys were in the military and that the military changes people in a very significant way. And for a person to be fighting overseas for whatever they feel in their minds is the justification for fighting overseas and to come back to the United States and feel as though they have great injustices in the United States on top of the rewiring that any person from the military will tell you happens when they are exposed to war and death and that type of violence. This is the formula for another tragedy. On top of that, add on the copycat factor because you know what, you cannot, he was actually, um, Gavin Young Long was actually in Dallas um, just last week, one of his videos, um, he was broadcasting from a hotel where he went to Dallas. Um, in that video, he stated that he did not go to Val Dallas because of the shooting, that he was there already, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is this, the point is this, is that if we just continue to minimize all of these mass shootings, all of these problems, whatever the reason for them, they all have some common factors that we, across the board from Orlando to the shooting in Michigan where uh, the bailiffs were, they're, they're all, they all have commonalities that we continuously ignore because we would rather politicize it for our political ends. And we do it on both sides. We do it on both sides and ultimately nothing happens nothing happens and so we allow that formula that allows for this type of massacre to happen to continue to be in place and for this to happen over and over and over again so i'm not going to give any more commentary on on the fact that these types of weapons allow maniacs to cause this much damage people who are willing to die for something are able to inflict in so much carnage very easily because they can get access to these guns. But I'm not going to give any commentary on that because we're not going to do anything about it in America. I'm not going to give any more commentary on the way we treat our veterans, the lack of access to care, the lack of access to treatment for uh, evaluation, for PTSD, for um, just the psychological evaluation. I heard someone say we need to do a psychological evaluation before we send them over and when we bring them back because you never know what this war has done to people. Then bringing them back into an environment where, yes, there is, and, and listen, people are going to want to tell you, well, if you just don't talk about it, then somebody like Gavin Young would long would not have gone. No, it's not as though we're incapable of viewing the systemic injustices for ourselves and making and drawing our own conclusions based on what we see. It's not like Gavin Long needed someone to coin Black Lives Matter for him to be uh, aware of the amount of injustice that's in his community, right? It's not as though it's not as though he would be completely oblivious to all of the police shootings if Black Lives Matter never existed. But anyway, that's a whole different conversation.